Three-year-old Robert Moore was found Saturday, October 21st, stuck in a vending machine in Wisconsin. The store was unable to find the key, so the local fire department was called. Reports say he was trying to get to the lovable stuffed SpongeBob. Texas is known as the second largest pecan growing state in the nation. France may be next if Robert Keene has anything to say about it. His plans are to start a pecan farm in France with pecan seeds from Texas. In order to raise business, Dallas-based Blockbuster is starting a new program called Total Access. It gives a free rental to anyone who returns DVDs from the internet to their local store. They are hoping to compete better against their biggest online rental rival, Netflix. Think you can get a boost with energy drinks? Recent studies have been found that energy drinks are more complicated than they advertise. Nutritionists warn that the drinks hook kids on unhealthy jolt and crash cycle. The bottle warns against consumption under the age of 18. Not only is there a tremendous amount of sugar than Coke, but one can of your average energy drink has three times the amount of caffeine than that of an average Coke. Now to feed Greenville's caffeine craze, a new Starbucks will be open next year off I-30. Starbucks is one of the leading coffee venues in the world. Beyond religion, the Bible is a book of history. At Greenville High School and other schools across Texas, the Bible is taught in the classrooms. The Supreme Court said, teaching of the Bible is okay as long as the class doesn't promote one form of religion over another. But a religious studies professor, SMU, said that's exactly what's happening. In all schools studied, the Bible was always taught as elective. Therefore, the Texas Department of Education has no say in the way the classrooms are taught. Our Bible teacher here at our school, Mr. Bent, said, I've been thankful to teach the Bible class since 1996. We don't use anything but the Bible, and our goal is to all know more about the Bible by the end of the year than when it started. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Clinton, Melanie. We go to the halls of GHS to visit with Mrs. Ballou about dual credit, and Mrs. Folden reminds us of Clothe the Child. Dual credit classes here at Greenville High School are those classes that the students can take and they receive high school credit as well as college credit at the same time. What I'm recommending is the students take as many dual credit classes as they can in combination with AP classes where their strengths are so when they get ready to graduate they could be a at least a sophomore in college. The Child is a project <clears throat> of uh, United Way of Hunt County that provides uh, a set of clothing for children 0 through 18 years of age or in high school yet and it uh, provides clothing for needy students. Alright, I'm here with uh, Coach Osborne, three year veteran and we're going to ask him a few questions today. Alright, uh, why did you decide to come to Greenville? I decided to come to Greenville because I knew it would be a good opportunity. Uh, I knew the kids here. I've worked these camps in Greenville for the past two or three years. All right. Uh, with the new district, what schools will be our primary rivalries this year? Well, Poteet uh, was in our old district, and uh, I know that's going to be a heated rivalry. Uh, Greenville and Poteet always play each other hard. Uh, we're adding a couple new school schools, McKinney. Uh, they're always talented, and uh, that, that should be a, also a pretty good battle. And, you know. All right. Last question. Uh, Why did you pass a university job to come here to Greenville? Um, like I said earlier, I knew Greenville was going to be a great situation for me. Uh, I knew we would have a chance to go very deep in the playoffs and compete for a district championship. Uh, I felt like this is where I needed to be. Uh, you know, I'm not ruling out a college job in the future, but uh, right now I know this is the right decision for me. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, the kids have responded greatly to me being here, and uh, you know, I just felt like this was the right move uh, for me and my family. And uh, I'm sure it's going to pay off. Thanks, Coach Osborne, for your time and back to you in the <laughs> studio.
for your team this year? My goals for my team this year are to start, number one, winning within, believing in themselves and their teammates. And one of our captains, LaQuinta Ross, is here. And <clears throat> last year she had to sit out most of the season because of injury. So I would like to hear her goals for her as a team captain, what her goals are for her team this year. LaQuinta. Um, one of my goals are for nobody getting injured and that we go to state and the playoffs and everything and hopefully that everybody do good so we won't have to worry about anybody failing and all that other stuff. Great question. Which team do you think might be the biggest competition for our girls this season? We did move into a new district and it's very competitive. Um, Forney High School and West Mesquite made the playoffs last year in this district so I, I imagine they will be some of the toughest competition. But you would question what you think? I'm thinking Terrell, Terrell a little bit because uh, last year before I got injured they was pretty good or whatever and they had this one girl that was a post and she was making a lot of points and we couldn't stop her as much and she returned back this year and I think that we got a better team this year anyway so I think we can handle them. Project graduation has gone from the planning stages to fundraising. The dodgeball tournament is a senior-only contest, but will be a contest for spectator fun. Here's Ben Gilbert getting the dodgeball updates. Uh, so whose idea was it to host a dodgeball tournament for a project graduation? Actually, uh, the idea came from Brad Powers. You know, I'd mentioned the senior class and assembly that we're going to do project graduation this year and ask for ideas because I told him we do things like co-ed volleyball and basketball and so on, ask for ideas. and. Uh, Brad came in one morning and asked me about the dodgeball tournament, about doing uh, a dodgeball tournament. All right, can we get a little clarification on the specs for the who can be on the team and not? Sure. Uh, the teams teams are made up anywhere from eight to ten seniors, so it's only the seniors that can actually participate in the in the game. And do you know where the tournament will be uh, played in? The tournament will be played in our gym. It'll be on the main gym floor. We'll actually use the volleyball court. Uh, the uh, the lines on the volleyball court will actually be the dodgeball court lines. So you have a, basically a 60 by 30 court. Uh, you have a center line down the middle uh, that splits the uh, the two sides, so the teams will be on each side of that. There's a 10 foot line off the the center line. That's actually what we're going to call the attack line in dodgeball. I think in the original rules I put nine foot, so I'll change that. It's actually 10 foot, but that's the attack line. So the team. Uh, the, the balls will be placed on the center line, three on each side of a center hash, hash mark. Uh, the team charges the balls to the right, so they go to the three balls on the right. That's what they pick up you know, to engage the other players with. You have to be behind the attack line before you can throw at anyone. Else. So they charge the balls, pick up the balls. They have to go back at least 10 foot or take the ball, get the ball behind the attack line anyway. And then, uh, then they can start throwing at the opponents and uh, begin the play. Um, and do you know which kind of ball will be used for the tournament? Uh, yeah, Ben, we actually ordered some special balls. Uh, the ball is a, it's a rubber foam, it's a foam ball uh, with a, a rubber shell, and uh, it's pretty, pretty easy to grip, uh, so they should be able to throw pretty well. It's 10 inches in diameter, so it's, it's plenty big. All right, and that's, that's it. Okay, Ben, thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to go over some of the rules, and we look forward to the uh, tournament, and hope there's plenty of teams out there to compete. Thank you very much. Mr. You bet. Jeffries. Thank you. Although Veterans Day celebrations have passed, Lion Direct salutes the GHS teachers who have served the country.
Thanks for watching. I'm Steve Stromberg. I'm Trent Jones. We're camped out here in front of Walmart. And we're, we're here to ask people what they're doing out here. So let's go. What are you doing out here? Uh, waiting on the Nintendo Wii. What else? How long have you been out here? Since 9 o'clock this morning. When does it come out? 12.01 tonight. I got here 19 hours ago. I've been here since 4. We got 5 hours to go so we can all get our hands on the Wii. This is going to be great. I just love the Wii. Uh, but yeah, I've got five hours left and it's still a long time. But, you know, it'll be worth it in the end, hopefully. Gosh, you're finally bigger than me. I'm almost done.